Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of recreating the Moog Diffam inside PD Vanilla. Today we are going to design the envelope generator. So without further ado, let's have a closer look to the actual envelope implemented by Moog. As we can see from this image taken from the user manual of the Diffam, the amplitude is determined by a linear attack while the decay follows a sort of exponential curve. This is the first info that we need to take into account. The second one is about the attack duration, which is fixed. In order to find the exact attack duration, I recorded a noise burst from the diffam and imported inside a DAW, where we can see that the attack time is about 5 or 6 milliseconds long. Now that we have all the parameters needed, we can start coding. So I'm going to use two V-lines. The first one is going to output a linear curve, while the second one a exponential curve. So we need to apply a POW tilde 2. And we can send to both the first one and the second one a message. The first one says go to 1, amplitude 1, in 5 milliseconds, which is the attack time, after 0 milliseconds. So immediately when you receive the bang, go to 1 in 5 milliseconds. Then uh, we need to set three more parameters, which are uh, go to 0 in 0 milliseconds after 5 milliseconds. We have to write the syntax otherwise the envelope will not work at all. So we can now move to the second one, which is go to 1 in 0 milliseconds, so immediately after 5 milliseconds. Then from uh, that point we can bring up the amplitude. We can bring down the amplitude to 0 in, let's say, 50 milliseconds. After 5 milliseconds. That's because once again we need to wait for the attack to finish. We can now use a bang connected to a trigger bang bang. Uh -huh. Here we have the two uh, message connected to the rightmost bang. The trigger goes to a tab right so that we can visualize the actual curve. We need, of course, an array that we can call something like curve mm, env. And let's increase its size to 10,000 or more, it depends. Here we write the uh, array name. We need to turn on the DSP since uh, vline tilde is an audio object. And here we have our envelope. Of course, changing this parameter, we can set a different decay time. And changing the power, we can change the shape of the decay. What I want to do now is to change this number on the run. So we can change it with a dollar sign. And here we can use a number box connected to a message where we say set $1. We need to use a set since the number box without set outputs both a float and a trigger and a bang and it will produce an error. If you want we can have a look. So if we connect the number box straight to the message of vline, we change, we change the value, we send a bang, and we'll see this error, which is argument number out of range. To fix that, we use set inside a message. Here we can apply a number box once again. And this bang is going to trigger, it's going to bang the last number box. So as you can see from here, we are changing just the number, 
we are not sending a bank. And here we have our curve that can change dynamically in its decay time. Now we can add the two segments using a plus tilde. We take the two V lines. And this is the final output of the overall envelope. We can have a listen. So we take this output, we send it. Let me bring down the DAC with the main output. We are going to add a, one more multiplication sign. You go here, you down here, we can increase the volume. And now have a listen. Good. Now we can disconnect this link since I want to tidy up a little bit. Now what I want to do is to create a sub patch for the envelope. We can do so generating an abstraction. So we create a new uh, PD project. We can copy our code. We paste inside here. Let me zoom in. Okay. Now from here, we need to add inputs and outputs. So we need an input for the bank. So inlet that we can call bank. Then we need an inlet for the number box. Oops. And finally, an output for the audio signal. So outlet and out. Once you have added all your inputs and outputs, you can save this file inside the folder where um, your project is. And then you'll be able to recall this patch inside an object. Defam env. Now we can close it. I can get rid of all this. I create a new object and if I type defam, oops, env, here I have my object. If we double click inside, we can have a look at the patch we created a few minutes ago. Now we simply need to add a bank here, a number box for the decay time and send it to the multiplication node. Now a plus I want to add is the control over this power so that we can control the curvature of the decay. We can do so generating a third inlet. We can call it power or decay curve. And we can connect it to the power. Now we can save, close. And here we have this third inlet. We can apply a number box that can be clamped between one linear and let's say eight. Now it's time to do a little bit of debugging. So let's apply a metro where we can change its timing and we send it to the defam env. If we set it to a very long time, something like a second, we have no problem. But if we decrease the metro timing, after, after a certain number, we'll start listening a clicking sound. And you can see it from here, we are producing this spike. The problem is that, let me open the defam env, we have a decay time, 554, that is longer than the metro time. 
So when we send a new bank with the metro, the decade didn't have time to bring the volume down to zero. But at the same time, DFAM env is producing a new envelope. But this time the value, the amplitude value, it's not starting from zero. That's why we hear that clicking sound. To solve this issue, we need to generate multiple DFAM env and send banks sequentially. So we need to first trigger the DFAM1, then DFAM2, 3, and so on. We can easily do so, copying and pasting a few of them. Let me do something like four envelopes. The decay time should be the same for everyone. So we need to connect the first number box to all uh, defam env and same process for the pow tilde number. From the metro, we connect a float that is connected to a plus one. So each time uh, the flow number is receiving a bang, it continues uh, adding one to its previous value. We then connect a mod four so that we cycle through values between 0 and 3. From here we can wire up a select 0, 1, 2 and 3. So when we receive 0, we want to trigger the first defam. When we receive 1, we want to trigger the second one and so on. From this point, we can improve the defam env. Instead of having four instances of the same envelope, we can create, we can modify the defam env so that inside one node, inside one object, we have all four envelopes. So we need to apply first thing four uh, bank inputs. Since on top here we have select 0, uh, zero 1, 2, 3. While the decay time inlet and the decay curve can be a common input for all four envelopes. So for now we can disconnect them. We can bring them on the right corner here. And we can copy the envelope. So the first inlet is going to be bank 1, bank 2, bank 3, and bank 4. Of course we don't need 4 tab writes, so we can delete these 3. We just need 1 tab write, so that it's cool to have a look at the curve envelope. From the second envelope to the last one, we can also delete the trigger node. So the bank can go straight to the message, the first message and this number box. Now we can take the DK time input and connect it to the correspective object. Same process for the decay curve that goes in, inside the right inlet of power. We can save, close. We can get rid of these three extra defam env. We can use the same uh, number box used here. And finally, we can con connect each select output to the correspective. Uh, input bank and finally the envelope output. Since the MOOC DFAM has two oscillators, we can create the second one. So let me bring all this section 
here so that you can free some space. Copy and paste. And we can split the defam env outputs. So the first two, the first two goes inside the first oscillator, while the other one, the third and the fourth inside this one.